Ah, the Jeep Wrangler. The automotive embodiments of ruggedness, of freedom, and a stubborn refusal to conform to societal norms. It's the kind of vehicle that speaks to me. It's the kind of vehicle that makes you want to throw on a flannel to just take a path untraveled. It's a vehicle that makes you really want to get in the thick of it. Let's dive into the review. So let's get one thing straight. This is not your average family crossover SUV. This doesn't care about your fancy electronic safety features. It doesn't care about parking sensors. It's built for adventure and tackling unforgiven terrain. The Wrangler Rubicon laughs at potholes, scoffs at speed bumps, and snickers at traffic jams that it can just uh, jump off the highway into a ditch and up onto a service road. It's the automotive rebel and it demands to be driven as such. But let me stop having fun for just a second. I'll pull over into a parking lot and we'll start talking about what we're driving here. So this isn't just a Jeep Wrangler. This one, the iconic Wrangler, has a new trick up its sleeve. The 4XE means that this thing has a plug-in hybrid powertrain shoved into it. In Jeep's lineup, this is also put into the Grand Cherokee. And Jeep has some fully electric vehicles coming down the pipe, but of course, we're gonna be focusing on this, the Wrangler 4XE. And while the Wrangler itself has a ton of different trims, special editions, things like that, we're gonna be focusing on the 4XE for this video which comes in four different trims. And those include the Willys, the Sahara, the Rubicon, and the High Altitude. And this one here is the 4XE Rubicon. It's not just a Rubicon. You have the 20th anniversary Rubicon. So 20th anniversary on this truck doesn't mean 20th anniversary of the Wrangler. It's 20th anniversary of the Rubicon itself. So if you want to get a Rubicon 20th anniversary, your options are the 4XE or the Rubicon 392, which we're not really touching on in this video. But let me tell you a little bit more about that 20th anniversary. So in 2003, the first Jeep branded Rubicon was introduced, named for the famed Rubicon Trail in the Sierra Nevada mountains. The Rubicon badge on your Jeep elevated the confidence for every off-road trail. Now the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 20th Anniversary Edition commemorates two decades of trail rated innovation and incredible adventures. All right, let's jump into the exterior design here. Obviously the Wrangler hasn't changed much since 2017, but there are a few things we can touch on. All right, most of the differences in the exterior here are coming from the 20th Anniversary Edition. We do have a steel bumper with grill guard that adds an aggressive look to the front end. We do have the blue tow hooks. Those are thanks to the 4XE trim. We obviously have the traditional round LED headlights here and fog lights, and your turn signals are on the fenders. The grill has been redesigned for the 20th anniversary edition models. This does have a half inch lift in suspension, but you also get 33 inch tires with 17 inch black beadlock capable wheels. And those are exclusive for the 4XE 20th anniversary edition. And then you also get a ton of little details with the graphics package. We've got this uh, hood graphic, it's matte black. You've got some designs in it, but it also has the blue for the 4XE and the 20th anniversary edition on there. And then the latitude and longitude of the Rubicon Trail. You've got a ton of these blue accents here, which I think look really good with the silver paint. We've got that trail rated four x four badge. We've got the cap for the plug-in part of the plug-in hybrid. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Black side mirrors, steel rails on the sides, our standard fuel cap, LED tail lights, 4XE badge here on the back and a full size spare tire. And you can't really see it here, but this is the cloth automatic uh, roof. So it will automatically roll back. We'll look at that more as we take it for a drive and get inside. But all in all, it's a beefy Jeep and definitely looks good. I'm not usually a fan of a lot of graphics on my vehicles, but these make sense. And 
I would definitely leave them on if I was getting this exact trim. And quickly coming to the back, looking at the cargo area. It's the traditional Jeep cargo area. Nothing really special about it here. It is a really good size. You can see the uh, bars here as you take off the side paneling, you'll expose these. They look really cool with everything pulled off of here. Do you have a 12 volt accessory port back here for powering things? And this one comes with the uh, bags for storing all of the bits as you take them off. And then there's a little cubby here with your charging cord for when you wanna plug it in at home or even on the go at a campsite. But again, not much has changed there. Let's go ahead and pop the hood, check out the engine, talk about the power plant and the electrified part of this vehicle. And then we'll jump inside because it's getting hot. So under the hood here, we do have a gas two liter turbocharged engine. This matched up with the electric motor delivers 375 horsepower, 470 pound feet of torque. And that's matched up to an eight speed automatic transmission. And this is gonna give you a really great feeling engine for the road, as well as riding trails and rock crawling. That torque is really great for getting over obstacles. Of course, you gotta know what you're doing, but the electric side of this thing is where it really gets interesting, especially on trails. We'll talk more about that as we drive it, but let's talk about that power and recharging. So the battery can be fully charged in approximately two hours using a level two charger, 240 volts or 12 hours using an included level one charger at 120 volts. And again, if you come over here to the side of the vehicle where the charging port is at, this is a little important for mainly one reason, and that's just that this does only support a level one or level two charger, not the level three chargers. So you're not doing really quick, fast charging on this thing. Although I did take the time to charge the battery up a bit. Not terrible, it's 724, so we're there just about 30 minutes or so. Got up to 25% charge on the battery. Not bad. All right, with that, let's uh, close up the hood, move inside, talk about the interior that we have here, and then we'll take it for a drive. All right, and we're inside the Wrangler now, and of course, it's the Rubicon, so we have seats here with the Rubicon nameplate. They are black and red Napa leather, really nice. We've got a black and red motif throughout the cabin here. It's a nice place to be, even for a Jeep. All right, and first off here, we do have the 8.4 inch touchscreen display with Uconnect 4C, which is uh, Jeep and Dodge and Chrysler's infotainment system. Looks really good, works just fine. You can see we do have off-road pages. And this is gonna give you some cool metrics like pitch and roll, some accessory gauges, the drivetrain, and your trail cam. This is your front-facing camera. You also have a rear-facing camera here. And you don't have to be in the off-road pages for that. You've got a quick button for a backup camera or a forward camera right here. And obviously, if you put it into reverse, you're gonna get that backup camera. No 360 camera, but it is what it is. Probably doesn't need one. You can see here we do have heated steering wheel. We have heated seats. You got all your climate control buttons in there, but you also have physical buttons down here that duplicate a lot of those functions, as well as some audio functions. You got this button down here that's exclusive to the 4XE that is max regeneration. So it's gonna use the uh, engine to regenerate the batteries. You also have your trail management button. You can see the Wrangler nameplate on the grab handle here. Below this set of buttons, you do have your window switches. You have a USB type C and a USB type A port, as well as an auxiliary port. You also have auxiliary buttons down here. So if you add some accessories like lights and stuff, you'll turn them on down here. You have a sway bar button to disconnect the sway bar. You also have the front and rear or rear only options here. You have your traditional Jeep four wheel drive shifter here. So you can go two wheel high, four wheel high auto, four wheel high part-time, 
neutral and four wheel low. Then your traditional shifter with the Rubicon 20th anniversary logo there. Nice cup holders, emergency brake, nice padded armrest, tools for taking off the doors and whatnot. And a big cubby there with another USB port. Here you get a nice Jeep steering wheel, leather wrapped red stitching all the controls that you would expect, including radar guided cruise control. You have your analog gauges with a digital screen in the middle that you can flip through to see different info. And you can see here, instead of an RPM gauge, you have a power gauge. So you know if you're charging or using power, you do have some drive modes and these are exclusive to the 4XE. So you have a hybrid mode, an electric mode and an e-save mode. So the e-save mode is gonna do all that it can to save battery life. The electric mode is gonna use that battery and the hybrid is gonna kinda of do both. And then like I mentioned before, we do have the power opening roof. So with a touch of a button, it goes all the way back and then you're open to the elements. Of course, you can then roll the windows down and keep the doors on, or you can take the doors off, take the side panelings off and really open this thing up. We didn't really do that during this uh, week, having the Jeep, but it's definitely fun. And it's really nice being exposed to the elements as you're driving this thing in uh, electric mode only. And we'll talk about that as we take it for a drive, which I think it's about that time. Let's take it for a drive. All right, and at the beginning of this video, we did discuss some of the no-nonsense driving that uh, <laughs> the Wrangler can do. You can definitely take it off-road through just about anything. But this one in particular is also really great on-road. I drove this thing into downtown Dallas, had it up on the highway plenty of times, took the family out in it, went grocery shopping in it. As a day-to-day -day vehicle, the Wrangler is really good. The Rubicon trim of the Wrangler is still really good and the 4XE makes it even more fuel efficient, especially if you're just palling around a neighborhood and uh, not getting up on a highway a lot. You can keep this thing in electric mode. It will do up to 21 miles in all electric, but that's if you've got that battery fully charged now. Every time I've driven this thing at an event or before this, it's always been completely drained of battery. So I've really never seen the benefits of having the fully electric or hybrid in this thing. But you do have those modes. We did go and charge it earlier today. We went from basically zero to 25%. I've been driving it since then in the e-save mode, which basically is using the gas power to recharge that battery as you drive, but it's also saving all of the electric power for another time. So you're not using any of the battery power. So from hitting 25% earlier today to driving for a couple of hours, we're already up to 43% battery and we're still in the e-save mode. We can go to all electric mode and that will be like driving an electric vehicle. I'm sure if you push it or something, it will still kick on that uh, gas motor, but we'll check it out and then you can go into hybrid mode which is using a combination of both that is if you push on it it will definitely kick in the gas motor but as you come to stops at stoplights and things like that you are using the electric only and that's going to save you fuel economy throughout the week that i've had this you probably saw when we were showing some of the instrument cluster and stuff like that uh, i've been averaging 18.3 miles to the gallon but again that's basically i've been using just the gas power in this thing, not the electric power at all. The EPA rates it at 49 MPGE. So if you are charging this thing and using it as a hybrid, you're gonna get way better fuel economy. And that's why you buy this thing. But in my experience, the electric power in this thing isn't just for fuel economy for day-to-day -day driving. It's also really great out on the trails. I did get the experience of driving this thing on an off-road trail when it was completely silent. Had the windows down, had the top back, climbing up big hills, going down, breaking branches, hearing the sounds of nature because you don't have a loud engine, roaring. <laughs> it's a really great experience if you've done off-roading and you've never done it 
completely silent, I would suggest trying it out. It's really cool and maybe the future of off-roading. So with that said, let's go ahead and switch it from the e-save mode to all electric. We are now in all electric mode. It says I have 12 miles of all electric that I can drive at the 45% battery that I have here. And it's definitely all electric. I'm doing 33 miles an hour right now and we're still just in electric mode. If I push that, no, we have 50 miles an hour stayed in all electric, which is really cool. And because you get that instant torque with the electric powertrain, that makes this thing pretty quick. Now pushing hard on the uh, pedal did engage the gas motor that time, but if you're a little bit more smooth, you can stay in all electric mode. And like I said, if you're just palling around the neighborhood, going to the store, you can do it without using a drop of gasoline, which is the way to go and is the point of having a plug-in hybrid versus just a regular hybrid. But of course you get that benefit of having the gas motor as well. So you don't have anxiety range from your electric vehicle. Now will Jeep someday make an all electric Wrangler? Maybe. I imagine weight becomes an issue. Puncturing the batteries on an off-road trail would definitely become an, a concern, but I think it'd be doable. And you get all of that in the package of a Wrangler, which I do like. It's pretty minimalistic. You do get the 8.4 inch touchscreen. Everything's easy to get to, easy to touch. I'm a bigger guy, 6'1", and I fit in it just fine. It's very comfortable for me. Like I said, we did have the kids three wide in the back for a good stint in this thing, and they were just fine. The biggest complaint that I get from the family is that it's so tall and doesn't have any uh, step rails that it's hard to get in and out of, and that's true. But other than that, this is just a fantastic everyday, even family vehicle. And we're still palling around in all electric mode. We've got the battery down to 36% with 10 miles of range, but that about sums up the driving experience in this thing. Let me uh, get back to a parking lot. We'll talk about the price, some of the competition, and I'll give you some of my final thoughts. Let's go. All right, so the 4XE Wrangler is super cool. Definitely the one you want to get, right? Let's talk about the price first. So the Willys 4XE, which is the base that you can get, has a starting MSRP of 54735 This one, the Rubicon, has a base MSRP just over 60 k And what we're sitting in here, the Rubicon 4XE 20th anniversary with all the bells and whistles, the nice roof has a full MSRP of 81,150. That's a lot of money. This is a lot of Jeep, but even comparing that to the Bronco Raptor that we drove not too long ago, that was $81,000 as well. So which would you rather have? <laughs> I guess that's gonna be up to you. Let's uh, jump out and I'll give you some of my final thoughts on that. All right, and with all of that, let me give you my final thoughts on the Rubicon. Wrangler 20th anniversary 4XE. This is definitely one of the best all around Jeeps that I've ever driven. I really do like it. I like the looks, I like the graphics package. I really love having that uh, electric option and that silent driving, especially when you're doing some trail riding. I think it's super cool to be going through nature, up hills, down hills, through creeks, all while being completely silent. As far as competition goes, uh, obviously the new Ford Bronco. I recently drove the Bronco Everglades. I drove the Bronco Raptor. I've got reviews out on those, but in uh, those videos, I do talk about the Wrangler and how I think it's all around just a better vehicle for day-to-day -day driving, as well as going off-roading. I do like the looks of the Bronco a bit better, maybe because it's newer, maybe because it's just bigger. Not to say that I don't like the looks of the Wrangler, but the Bronco just has something that uh, I like about it. That being said, after driving this one again for a week, after driving those for weeks, I'm left with the same conclusion that I had 
uh, while reviewing those that if you're wanting something that's gonna be great to live with day to day, and can handle just about anything, the Wrangler is the way to go. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Wrangler and having the 4XE in a Wrangler. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We do a different review every week. We have a lot of off-roading content and off-roaders. Even if we don't take them off-road, we've got a lot of uh, content on off-roading vehicles. So if you're into any of that, please take the time to subscribe especially if you made it this far in the video. And finally, also go check out TXGarage.com where we've got a lot of written reviews as well as event and news coverage over there from a lot of great authors, not just myself. Definitely worth checking out. But with that, guys, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.